Would the town clerk please call the roll? Chairman Pusignata? Here. Councilor Barry? Here. Councilor Carson? Here. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor Lynch? Here. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Roberts? Here. Student Representative Dunphy? Here. Student Representative Nelson? Here. And Manager McGovern? And our municipal clerk? Present. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, reports and correspondence is next, and I'm going to take the liberty of just making a short comment beforehand. Um, this is our first televised uh, council meeting since the events of September 11th. Uh, those tragedies have touched everyone in Cape Elizabeth in some way or another. And I just wanted to thank everyone in the town who's been involved in positive efforts to raise money and offer help since then. Our, our President Bush has indicated to us that we all need to get on with our lives and to get on with the nation of the business, and we are here tonight to get on with the business of the people of Cape Elizabeth. But I do want to recognize everyone for their efforts and um, know that we are all keeping in our thoughts the various uh, victims of the tragedies of September 11th. Thank you. Reports, correspondence. Um, Councillor Barry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, or uh, Councillor Fritz. <laughs> well, I am the alternate for the regional waste systems uh, uh, Delegate. And I uh, filled in for Councillor Fritz a couple of weeks ago at the meeting there. It was very interesting. They, uh, they have litigation going on between the, uh, the, the EPA and the, uh, the, the regional waste system uh, people. And that uh, they built a fine from about $40,000, which they were willing to pay up until uh, over $400,000 that they're demanding. And it's uh, going to mediation now. We have uh, an attorney, I guess, uh, going into mediation for the regional waste system to try to uh, bring some order out of chaos with the uh, regional waste system. In the meantime, uh, there's a movement afoot to raise the uh, fee from $72 to $80 a ton, as I understand it. Uh, one, uh, we, we went on tour through the facility over there, which is very interesting, and uh, to see how they uh, bring tons and tons of trash. They brought in, just from one supplier, they brought in 3,000 tons from, January, from July 1st to uh, September 13th. 3,000 tons, and that's 800 less than last year. And uh, so there's a lot of uh, uh, recycling going on. Uh, I know. Uh, Councillor Carson described Councillor Fritz as the <laughs> queen of recycling. I guess I'm the prince of recycling because I'm the author. <laughs> and uh, so uh, they had new committee appointments, and Councillor Fritz is uh, appointed as the chair of the recycling committee. And uh, that was about it. And I have another announcement. I have now completed 100 meetings as a member of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so I hit the, the triple figures here. It took me since 1967 that I finally made it. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fritz. I just wanted to mention um, that I was pleased to be able to participate in um, and was asked to participate in the third grade class um, study at Pond Cove School of uh, their unit on government. and. Uh, the class that I attended had very enthusiastic kids that, that just pounded me with questions, <laughs> very tough questions. So uh, it was very interesting, and uh, it's good that that is a study in government, even at, at the third grade level, is uh, being required of our school learning results program. So um, it was very interesting, lots of fun. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention was that I uh, participated in some trail work with the uh, uh, Cape Elizabeth Land Trust at um, Robinson Woods, and uh, they also had uh, some help from people from the main um, outdoor adventure club. 
uh, that help that live in Cape Elizabeth. So that project is going along very well. I think they've improved the trailhead uh, immensely and just reminding people that that Robinson Wood um, trail area is to the north of the pillars off of Shore Road. So uh, that people can, I think, more clearly identify the trailhead going in now. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Roberts. Thank you. I was pleased this past month to be invited and be able to attend a, uh, a meeting or, or an event for the Lighthouse volunteers. There's approximately 60 of them. They met to be recognized for the time and effort they put in raising money for the town at, at no cost to us for their time and labor. And uh, we met at the Higgins Beach Inn. It was a great affair. Cheryl gave a real update on a lot of the uh, monies that these folks have raised and stuff, and I did not write the amount down, but perhaps Anne, uh, who was also there with me, or Mike could tell us, but they, I don't know if you don't know the top spot. Head. I don't recall. You don't recall it either? A lot. It was in a phenomenal amount of money these folks have raised, and uh, the recognition for them was, was well deserved, and I was really pleased to be able to be there. I don't know the exact number, but I plan to look it up in another week on the 10th anniversary of the Lighthouse, but it's approximately $2.5 million in sales since it opened uh, 10 years ago uh, this month. And, and that money is used for the... It, to for first what? pay for the, uh, the goods that are sold. That's the major expense. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, it's, it's used for the upkeep of the Lighthouse and the payment of the expenses at the Lighthouse. Great. Thank you. Any other reports, correspondence? No? Okay. Moving on. The town manager's report. I had uh, three brief items and one uh, not as brief. First of all, uh, Councillor Roberts mentioned the Portland Headlight. Uh, Cheryl Parker Petrus, uh, who is the director of the Museum of Portland Headlight, is leaving us this month. After 10 years, she uh, recently uh, acquired the last name Petrus, and she's <laughs> moving with her new husband uh, down to Tennessee. And I know we all wish her well. There will be a get-together for her at uh, Spurry Hall on the day before Halloween, October 30th. There will be invitations mailed out, but everyone's welcome to attend, even if you don't receive an invitation. And it's, I don't know the exact hours, it's around 5 p.m. Uh, on that day. It's like a 5 to 7 type thing. So you can wear your costume, Prince uh, Henry, if you'd like. What, what, what day? <laughs> the day before Halloween. The 30th. 30th. So uh, it should be a nice event. And, I know everyone wishes Cheryl well as we send her off and thanks her for, as the volunteers did on the evening that uh, uh, the chairman and Jack attended that event as well. Uh, did want to bring you up to date on the council had a, a, a bit of a controversial discussion back a few months ago about the displays and exhibits policy at the library in terms of the artists no, be, no longer being able to display their, their prices uh, for some of the art that, that's available there for purchase. Uh, I met this week with the chairman of the library trustees, uh, Hank Kinsley, and with Ann Carney, and they indicated that the trustees are now re-looking at that policy. So if anyone has any input from the public uh, that they'd like to provide to the trustees, it might be timely at this point. They are re-looking at that policy, maybe with an eye to making a recommendation to the town council. Uh, third, I wanted to congratulate uh, Deborah Lane on her, uh, she's probably wondering what I'm congratulating her on. since. Uh, she recently helped to coordinate a New England conference of uh, city and town clerks, and it was an absolutely tremendous effort. You might have seen her car here a lot of off hours, and she really put in a lot of time above and beyond the call of duty, uh, bringing clerks, again, it was this past month right after the incident, and really uh, came through in helping to sponsor that conference, and really did a, a lot of service uh, to the Clerks Association, as well as... Uh, you know, I, I think really showed a lot of how Cape Elizabeth cares about it. So I want to congratulate her on that and uh, yep. say, uh, you know, every indication is that it was, it was a big success. Uh, beyond that, cleanup week's coming up. Uh, <coughs> the usual activities, uh, things have been very busy. Taxes were due. I want to thank everyone for paying uh, the taxes, <laughs> particularly during these times, as well as uh, uh, all of the staff in the office for all their extra efforts and making sure that the funds were quickly deposited. Uh, Budget. Uh, I had sent the council memorandum uh, a couple weeks ago looking at where we stand with our budget after the first quarter. The town has a fiscal year that begins July 1, ends on June 30. Uh, some of you may have read the city of Portland is having some financial difficulties as a result of 
the economy as a result of their, their estimating of revenues and according to the, the last week's newspaper overtime of some of the public safety personnel. Okay. Uh, looking at the uh, municipal budget for Cape Elizabeth, things really could not be any tighter. Uh, the entire budget from taxes, school, municipal, is about $22 million. Uh, we have looked at it after the first quarter, where we stand then, and projected out from what we know now every revenue through to June 30. And it shows of that $22 million, we're now projecting to be $12,000 above budget in terms of our expected income. Uh, that is, you know, closer than, closer than a, a, a whisker. Uh, so it is of much concern. Uh, we, we look at the revenues conservatively, uh, but, you know, at the same time there's concern as we look at, you know, why are we so close? Uh, one, there have been two factors that weren't known at the time the budget was was adopted. Uh, one is the, actually three, there was, uh, one was the, obviously the, the further slowdown of the economy that we've been experienced almost continuously since the budget was adopted and, you know, a little bit uncertain as to where that stands more recently. Uh, secondly, there's been a huge drop in interest rates that we're earning on our municipal investments. Uh, we're only allowed to put municipal funds in CDs, repurchase agreements, you know, fixed rate issues. Uh, last year when we were making those investments, we were earning over 6%. Right now we're down around 27, 29 in that range. When that income last year was almost 300,000, you divide those rates in half, that's 150,000. So that's, that's the, the second item that we didn't know. And I want to return to that one in a minute. The third item is that, which on the positive side, is that some of our property valuations came in slightly higher than we anticipated. Uh, there, was some, there was some additional construction beyond what we had planned. There were a couple of other issues which I need to remember. That was helped us. Uh, but those three factors plus everything else sort of declining ever so slightly in the budget with the exception of excise tax, which is surprisingly right on target, uh, it all comes out to 12000 The The other point I want to mention back to that interest rate, because I've just focused it from the municipal point of view, but also looking at that from the citizen point of view, uh, one in six households in Cape Elizabeth now have a person living in at 65 years or older. Many of those senior citizens are fairly well to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is many of those citizens are also not so well to do. Many of those senior citizens have their funds in, in fixed rate return accounts. You know, you look at principles of financial management, the older you get, you're supposed to have it at fixed rates. Uh, therefore, citizens also, their own investments, if they were putting them out for CDs a year ago and did ESCD, they were earning 6%. They're now earning in the, the low to mid twos. Mm. Uh, you know, it, it really <coughs> is of much concern and something we're going to be looking at very closely and listening to very closely uh, because, it, it, again, it not only directly affects the town in terms of its finances, but it's an issue that we really need to try to get a bit better handle of with uh, citizen finances, particularly amongst those one in six households that are, have a person 65 or older. Uh, finally, what are we doing about the budget and where we stand? Uh, we're looking at, at a number of things. First is, is before any vacancy is filled, we're going to look at the possibility of whether or not it maybe is not filled. And before I authorize any vacancy of any full-time or part-time position, I'm going to review it with the chairman of the finance committee and the chairman of the council so that the, the whole message is it isn't business as usual, nothing automatic. Second, uh, you know, if someone has savings in the budget, sometimes they'd come in to see me and say, well, we can buy this other item, and it might be $1,200, it might be, you know, over the years when times have been good, you know, if it sounded reasonable, if it sounded like something they needed, I would say yes. Uh, right now, there won't be any of that authorized unless I listen to the whole case and then it goes on a register and that register goes to the full council. This is for any item specifically not listed in the budget. So that, you know, really puts an extra hurdle of review and a lot of, you know, questioning was this really necessary by everyone knowing before you even ask for it, you need to know that it's going to get the full public light of, of review and, uh, it won't come, all those won't come specific to the council for approval, but if you begin to see any that are of any concern, uh, you know, that that would be, that would be uh, important. Also, we're going to be, instead of just quarterly reviews of the budget, we're going to be looking 
every month, even a lot more so, of not only where we stand compared to the budget, but where we stand compared to the projections we made on October 1. Because as long as we stay within those October 1 projections, we're fine. If we're not, we need to find other areas of savings. Uh, you know, a lot of our budget is fixed, but you know, my, my hope is, is that you know, there will continue to be some good news, and there are, you know, there are good pieces of information that communities so often that help us, as, as well as uh, you know, when, when they aren't so good, we're going to try to find a place to, to make reciprocal savings. And my hope is we will do that through having vacancies in place longer. For example, Portland Headlight, some have questioned you know, why that position wasn't filled before Cheryl left. The reason is because their sales are down about 18 percent. And, you know, I've been looking at that in terms of, uh, you know, going slower and filling vacancies. The one area where we wouldn't do it would be in the police because we don't want to get into the overtime uh, issue, but we're not expecting. So the budget, it's extremely tight. We're watching it very closely. There's no reason for alarm or panic, but it's, 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 if it was not for that, for two things, if it was not for the valuation coming higher than expected, and if it wasn't, as I indicated in my memo, the council having the courage during the budget process to look at the revenues that have been estimated in January and to revise them in April downward, uh, we, would, we would have a, if it wasn't for those two factors, we would have a $300,000 problem instead of having a, just a $12,000 uh, it, you know, apparent to the good, but things are tight, and we're watching it very closely. And it's it's not business as usual. Uh, we're also, you know, again looking at all our projects and and even ramping up questions on change orders, and you know, making sure that you know maybe we'll be able to gain some funds from having some savings on those. So things are tight. Yes, and I think I I hope I I know I can speak for all of the council when I say that the council is very concerned about the financial pressures facing the town and facing the citizens of the town. Um, and you, you may have seen uh, in the news that there is some action afoot, proposed action afoot um, by not just Cape Elizabeth, but many towns in Cumberland County trying to focus on one aspect of our budgets that is uh, putting a lot of pressure on us, and that is the Cumberland County budget, because their budget gets pushed through to the various towns. So we are all trying to do all we can because we recognize the great pressures, not just on the town, but on the citizens. So. I was just, you know, in listening to this conversation, and, and it is difficult for so many communities, but I had lunch today with the city manager in Portland, and the September 11th event has so far cost the city of Portland $75,000, and now it continues to cost $25,000 a week for them to support the security items. That is including the port. That's only the airport. Yeah. So this is putting, and this is just one small community, and all these communities that have like airports, <coughs> this is over their budget. I was stunned to hear what the cost is yeah. for them to deal with. This is like New York, only yeah. little. It's, a, it's a, a microcosm sort of reflection of what's happening right. all across the country. <laughs> OK. Uh, is that it for the town manager's report? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Is there any citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda? Hearing none. Um, the minutes of our last meeting. Do I hear a motion? I'll move that the minutes be approved as read. Thank Second. You. As read. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of our September. 10th, 2001 meeting. Council. Um, I just had one correction um, in the second paragraph on the first page um, where it says two additional collection days sponsored by Regional Waste System. It should be they were mercury product collections. They, it wasn't a household hazardous waste collection. It was mercury specifically. For the, okay, so for it's RWA. two additional mercury, mercury collection days. Right. Thank you. Any other changes or corrections? No, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? 7 0. It passes. Okay, moving on. Uh, item number 38, which is a renewal application for the Perfudic Club's liquor license and special amusement permit. I move uh, approval of the request from the Papuda Club for special liquor license and special amusement permit. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion or questions? Councillor Fritz? Can I just come in? I am a member of Perpudic, but I'm not in a decision making role at the club. So just to let you know if that's any problem for anyone in my vote. <laughs> I see no conflict of interest. <laughs> no problem to me. Thank you, Councillor McGinty. I have provided entertainment over there, but I don't think that's a conflict. <laughs> I hope not. I hope that's not a conflict. Dinner tonight. At least I thought it was entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and many of us have eaten dinner there too. So I don't Lake think we, uh, yeah, I don't think there, we have any big so. conflicts up here. That's a conflict. Nothing worth noting. Um, okay, it's been moved. Has it been moved? Yes, it's been moved and, and seconded. seconded. Thank you. Um, to approve it, all those in favor? 7-0. So passes. Okay. Um, excuse me just a second. I just realized we've neglected to introduce our two new members here, um, our student reps, um, Mariah Nelson and Julia Dunphy, welcome. Thank you very much. You're for, they're, for the public who can't see who I'm looking at, these are um, high school, Cape Elizabeth High School student representatives to the, to the council, and you've been chosen by your peers Should to come over here and represent the, view, the views of the young people in town and provide us with your insights. So thank you for being here. You don't have microphones in front of you, but if at any time you want to make comments, Councillor Carson can just whip hers over to the right there and you can just come stand up and speak at that. So thank you for being here and I'm sorry I forgot to mention you at the beginning of the meeting. Don't be bashful, you do have to put your hands up to be recognized and stomp on the table or whatever. But <laughs> Yeah, we won't bite. Okay, thank you. Back to the regular agenda. Um, item number 39. Um, our town clerk, Deborah Lane, would you like to introduce this or say something about it? To. We are now preparing for the referendum election to be held on Tuesday, November 6th. Cape Elizabeth residents all vote at the high school gymnasium. It would be in order for the council to set the opening hours of the polling place, which I recommend for 7 a.m. And by state law, we would close at 8 p.m. Okay. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I'll second that. But I have a question. Do we usually open at 7:30, or has it been seven right along? Seven. seven to eight. Yes. So I believe it has been seven. It's a 13-hour day for our hard-working clerk. Yes, and and her other staff members there too. Right, and the wardens. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, do we have any discussion or further questions? No. Move the question. All those in favor? Seven zero passes. Item number 40, which is uh, action to set a public hearing on the proposed revised appendices to the general assistance ordinance. Mr. McGovern, would you like to say anything about this? Yes. Each year, uh, working with the Department of Human Services, the Maine Municipal Association recommends uh, proposed appendices to our general assistance ordinances. Uh, the town of Cape Elizabeth has always used the model ordinance because we, quite frankly, don't have enough general assistance to really keep track of it, uh, you, know, on, you know, to review the market and uh, check, you know, to the degree that one of our neighboring communities does. Uh, the good news here, and it's it more costly to the town and to the state, uh, is that the Cumberland County uh, maximum allowable is it has an average increase of $88 for a monthly benefit. That's very positive. What we're finding is uh, people are really strapped and uh, the, the limits were, were very low. So while that will cost us more money, it will cost the state. It's certainly in keeping with the needs in the community as housing cost and other cost of increase. So while this does have a, a uh, deleterious, is that the word? Deleterious. Deleterious. It has a negative effect on our finances. It's bad. It, has a, it does have a good effect on the people most in need. So I would encourage you to set a public hearing for this, for the meeting on Wednesday, November 14th. Did I get that date right? So moved. Second. 7.30 at City the Town Hall. Yes, all those things. Okay. Did, did you have any other comment, or was that just your question? 
I had a question. Councillor Roberts. These new standards are maximums which go into effect on October 1. Are we doing that administratively anyway at this point? We will. <laughs> and is it possible, do we really need to have this for the council every year or could this be adopted by reference in, we, we, in the ordinance? We looked into the, it that one year and we were instructed that the municipal offices had to adopt them, even though we have to do them even yeah, anyway. Well, other communities don't. <laughs> But we do what we're told to do, and yeah, I know they do. <laughs> we have had discussions on this in the past on whether we should do a survey and do other things, but we've never done that. But at least it leaves it open if anybody wants to raise the issue. And it only takes a minute to adopt it. Right. Any further comments? <laughs> yeah, but just to point out that the uh, that Thomas Jordan Trust lost ninety-six thousand dollars in. Uh, market in this last year and so uh, any increase here will help I'm sure. okay. no further comments I moved and seconded let's move the question all those in favor seven zero thank you okay um, item number 41 which is um, acting uh, our action to request Upon a request to provide a sewer extension along Route 77 from Broad Cove Road to the Good Table <coughs> restaurant lot. Manager McGovern, do you have some yes. comments? I think as the council recalls from earlier council action, the sewer now goes up Broad Cove Road, the very top of Broad Cove Road, actually right in the center of Route 77. Uh, the what's the name of that little store there now? They could change the name. Cape Variety. Variety. Cape Variety uh, could get access to the sewer currently because of uh, they could go into that manhole. The good table, as you all know, had a tragic fire a few months ago uh, now, and uh, they would like to hook up to the sewer, and we would like them to hook up to the sewer, uh, particularly with the adjacent wetland there and, and the, the type of flows that a, a restaurant generates. We believe it's beneficial to the environment to have this particular property hooked up to the sewer. Uh, the owner had approached us about wanting to put what they call a force main in, which would be right from the restaurant all the way back to the sewer. Cities and towns generally don't like force mains because you can't hook anything up to it. You get pro issues of problems of ownership because it's a single building line out in the public right-of-way. We much prefer that if a sewer extended that it be done in such a way that it could be used by other parties down the road, which uh, you can't do with a force main. When they came to us about that, they were going to be footing the entire expense of it. It was, it was fairly considerable. but. Our suggestion to put in a, a regular sewer line, the gravity sewer line, 8-inch gravity sewer line, uh, cost a lot more money. So what I've come up with is, is a proposal that in essence, you know, you can look at it several different ways, but in essence, the good table will be funding about what they would have funded had they put in the force main to their own benefit, and we will be funding the additional cost of putting in that 8-inch eight, eight gravity sewer line. Uh, the cost of this, we, we don't have an exact cost yet because until the council authorizes it, we're not going to, uh, is uh, 38,525 engineer's estimate plus 5,000. What I'm proposing is that the Good Table restaurant contribute 17,000 toward the cost of the public sewer. That 17,000 is inclusive. It includes this sewer connection fee already within that. They would not have to pay that additional. We would also be putting a sewer stub for them extending across Route 77, so their contract who would put in the building sewer would only need to do it from the edge of their property into the restaurant. They would not need to do it across Route 77. We would hope to get this done in the, uh, the very near future, uh, and we'd hope to use the existing contract because we have all the unit prices in there that overall were fairly favorable because it could be done very quickly. Uh, so that the restaurant could be up, ready to open whenever the restaurant itself is ready to open and they get the other permits that they need. So I would recommend that the council authorize the extension and that you uh, accept the contribution of $17,000 from the Good Table restaurant uh, toward the sewer extension and to appropriate the, the balance from, to authorize the balance to be funded from the sewer fund. Thank you. That was, that was so worded that I don't think, it was, so I was going to make a motion, but that was so well done. I wish you could do it yourself. Let's see if I can do it. You could just say, like he said. Yeah, we could say, <laughs> did you get that down, Deb? Absolutely. What he said? 
I move approval of the request to uh, provide a sewer extension for Long Route 77 from Broad Cove Road to the Good Table Restaurant, and that we accept the, the uh, what'd you say? The contribution. contribution from the owners of the Good Table Restaurant of $17,000 toward the cost of the town's commitment to do this. Second. <laughs> Good job. Did, yep. Is there anything left out of that? Just motion? other than introducing the owners who are here. Well, I just want to make sure that we get the motion on the table and that it's been moved and seconded. I just want to make sure we get the words right. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. The owners are here. If you would like to say something, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, you may. I think it's important for us and the town. If you could just come up to the podium, please, so that everyone can hear. Well, while she's coming up, could I just ask a question? There is sufficient funds in the sewer. Yes, sir. Uh, I think personally it's, it's advantageous to the town also for parking reasons. Um, without the sewer, we can't extend our parking, which in our new plans we do plan to add parking spaces so that they're not up and down the road, which I know the town doesn't like. Without it, we, we can't park on a beach bed. So in, for that point, it's also to, to the town's advantage, we think, and to others. Thank you. Lisa, could you identify yourself? Could, I what? Could you identify yourself? Please stop. This is one of the owners of the good table. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have no specials today. <laughs> <laughs> no specials. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any other comments or questions? Uh, I have a question. Um, Lynch. And perhaps, Mike, you can answer this. Um, if someone further down the line were to decide they wanted to tap into this, they would be able to use it. Is there um, any kind of mechanism for um, capturing some of the costs that might benefit that secondary user, yeah. both for the town and or the private party that's contributing? Yeah. When, when that occurs, we're going to be dealing with the same problem we're dealing with now. And we'd, you know, that my hope is we'd look to them to make a contribution to, to bring it down further. The, the one exception to that that m might be able to get into this sewer would be the Lions Club out, out the back of their building because I think w with this will terminate, the Lions Club could get to it. Mm -hmm. But they would be required to make a $3,000 contribution uh, for, as a connection fee regardless. Thank you. Okay. Any, any further? Uh, Councilor Fritz. So then when, um, say, Cape Variety, if they wanted to connect or anything that's existing, they would come and get council approval? No. Cape Variety already has the sewer available to them. They're in the sewer service area. They would not need a sewer extension. They just need a building sewer, which they would do at their own cost. They would need to pay $3,000 to go into the sewer uh, for their property. But the sewer already, even before this, is available to that property. Okay, so then it, and then it would be available to, I mean, there's, say, a vacant lot that's next to the good table. Further along? Further out. I think that's wet. It's wet, wet is wetland, you said? It's wet. I don't know if that's a buildable lot. I, I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> but again, you know, it, it's, you've got to keep bringing the sewer out. You know, our hope is at some point, that you know, maybe we might do a more of a, a longer-term plan. You know, the, what, what this is really—I'll I'll be blunt about it, direct about it. The you know, long-term, the end by the sea is going to need to be on sewer. And you know, and there's also the land next to the end by the sea is still zoned business. So eventually, probably the sewer is going to get go down that way. But you know, someone's going to need to have come up with the big bucks because the town doesn't have it. The big bucks. The big bucks, and that would be down by the end by the sea. I'm not identifying any specific properties that would need to come up with the big bucks, but it would be down, <laughs> yeah, down in that area. And just, um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I favor s providing the sewer to the good table and to the existing buildings there, but I do get pretty concerned about whether this opens up for growth beyond. Um, I mean, I think that's what the original referendum on the sewer system was all about was making sure that sewer didn't, wasn't particularly available for lots of new growth. And um, so 
I'm going to be watching that very carefully. But I think that it's, it's appropriate to provide for existing structures now, you know. Okay. Um, and certainly the good table is a, I, I want to see you rebuilt and get back to serving food again. <laughs> She's hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Any further comments? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? It's 7-0. Congratulations. Good luck with rebuilding. Yeah, hurry up, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Item number 42, a request to close all non-essential services on Monday, December 24th. Do you want to say anything, Mike? Or I can say it. I, I could read through it. December 24th falls on a Monday this year. It is, this is a, a memo from Mike McGovern to the Council. This date is usually one of the quietest of the year. When it falls on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, the town generally closes at 12 noon. Prior tradition has been that when uh, December 24th is on a Monday, the town office is closed for the day. Uh, Mr. McGovern recommends that we authorize all non-essential services to close for the full day on December 24, 2001. That would include the Town Hall, Thomas Memorial Library, Don Richards Pool and Fitness Center, the Museum at Portland Headlight, the Refuse Disposal Area, and Public Works if there isn't a snowstorm. Madam Chairman. Yes. One of the campaign planks in my spirited campaign <laughs> was to support our town employees, and I would like to move to uh, close uh, all non-essential services on Monday, December 24th, so that our town uh, employees might have the day off. Thank you, Councillor Berry. Do I hear a second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Any? Yes, Councillor McGinty. In keeping with the tradition of William Jordan, I thought all the services were essential. Not, there were no non-essential services. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you Thank you, John. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any further comments? I guess not. All those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. That goes along with, has the poll been moved yet? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, New. Yeah. There's a new item uh, that we would like to. How do we do this? I'm going to introduce it and yes. see if anyone. <laughs> introduce it and see if anybody wants. I'll to introduce it and see if anyone wants to suspend the rules, take it out of order. I think some of you may be aware that the Inn by the Sea uh, received a notice from the town about two months ago that uh, their outside activities uh, events weren't specifically allowed, had never been permitted by the town. Uh, that issue is, is going through the planning board, uh, being reviewed right now. The Inn by the Sea uh, owners, uh, through their representative Steve Moore, Stephen Moore, have also asked that part of the deliberations and debate on this possibly be allowing a property in a business B district to meet some of their parking requirements by having off-premises parking. By, for example, the Inn by the Sea for their event might be able to work out a deal with the good table. It's not, if the good table had available parking, exactly, and the good table could maybe benefit from it. But, but anyway, they, they, they would like this looked at. The council doesn't need to make a decision tonight, but the process, even for the planning board to look at this, could take six to nine months. And it, it just came in today. The council doesn't meet again until November 14th. That's a long time to, to it's not to look at it because that way the planning board wouldn't get to look at it until December. So what I'd like you to consider without taking a position on this yay or nay is simply to refer to the planning board so it could begin to be looked at to see if it makes sense or not makes sense. Otherwise it won't get looked at until December. So I'd recommend that you suspend the rules to take up an item out of order. I move to uh, suspend the rules to take up an item out of order. Second. Are you sec seconded? And moved and seconded. All those in favor? 7-0. So we've suspended the rules. Now what do we do? Bring up the item. Just put someone it, to someone yeah. want to make a motion? What, yeah, make, what number is it? <laughs> what, what, what number does it become? Item number 43. 
Mm, 40, 40, 44. 44. Yes, that was 43. Sorry. Number 44. Um, who, who, Jack? I would move that the proposed text amendment to <coughs> off street parking 19-7-8 uh, be referred to the planning board for consideration. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All the, uh, Just, uh, does off, off street parking means not on the street, right? Not in the um, bikeway, I guess. You know, as this memo indicates, it, it says off street. I think what they really mean is off premises uh, parking. If you, when you read down below, particularly the final sentence in, this, in the second paragraph, what they're asking is language that would allow land uses like the in by the sea to meet its off-street parking requirements through off-site sources, possibly in existing parking lots at other uses such as nearby churches, restaurants, or public institutional facilities. I think it's a, you know, they're required to have so much off-street parking, mm -hmm. but they're looking for some of that being accommodated off-premises. Mm -hmm. Is Council thinking here to use uh, uh, buses uh, and back and forth yeah. behind the town hall down there and so forth? I think they're probably looking at nearby churches more than they're looking at the town hall. <laughs> we'll never know. Any other comments or questions? No? Okay, all, let's move the question. All those in favor of sending this to the plan board? 7-0. Thank you. Okay. Um, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anything to add? No? Okay. Um, I would just like to mention before we uh, move on to our next item, uh, some upcoming workshops that the Council has. There's one tomorrow evening, uh, October 11th at 7.30, and then that one is we will be discussing a proposed community center, just in general, um, getting an update from the Ordinance Committee. We'll go, be going through the status of town council goals for the year and getting an update on county issues. And then on Monday, October 22nd at 7.30 p.m., we will be meeting in workshop to further discuss the proposed community center. I just wanted to mention those. Those are both at town hall. Do we have? Yes. Somewhere at town hall. Um, in the building. Uh, so I just wanted to mention those before we moved on to uh, item number 43, which is the manager's recommendation to enter ex executive session. Anything you want to say about it? No? So much to make a motion okay. stating the purposes at the appropriate time. Okay. I'll Anyone? move that we enter executive session to discuss upcoming collective bargaining with police and public works bargaining units and to discuss property acquisition disposition issues. Do I hear a second? Second. And moved and seconded, Councillor McGinty. Um, is there any indication we may take some action after this executive session? Okay. No. We will not be taking action after this, so we will just be going into our executive session and then adjourning. Thank you for making that clear. And moved and seconded. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much.